Hi, I'm Matt Silver, the CEO and co-founder of Forger, a freight tech startup that helps companies move their goods between the US, Mexico, and Canada. And I'm gonna talk about how technology is transforming North American cross-border freight. Before we dive in, a little bit more about me. I got my start in the industry over a decade ago, learning the ropes in domestic shipping before ultimately building out the Mexico department at Coyote Logistics. I learned a lot during my time at Coyote, and I saw firsthand the unique headaches and challenges of North American shipping. It's the reason I started Forager in 2018, to address some of those challenges with new and innovative technology I'm excited to talk about today. Speaking of what we'll be talking about, here's a quick look at today's presentation. We'll start by discussing some of the ways technology has been successfully applied to US logistics. Then we'll talk about some of the unique challenges that have hampered innovation across the border. Finally, we'll discuss why innovation is so critical for cross-border freight and dive into some of the new solutions hitting the market. The logistics industry of today looks very different than it did 10 years ago. In the past 10 years, over $310 billion have been invested in logistics startups. Over half of that investment has taken place in the last three years alone. That is a lot of money, and that investment has reshaped U.S. domestic logistics. When making this slide, I struggled to select only a handful of the hundreds of logos I see every day. From robotic warehousing and inventory management to food delivery apps and autonomous trucks, nearly every link in the domestic supply chain has seen some measure of innovation. The modern landscape of logistics has transformed from a handful of analog legacy providers to a massive array of specialized startups tackling some of the biggest problems in the industry. This is especially exciting because this transformation is ongoing. U.S. companies will spend more than $2.5 billion on disruptive logistics technologies by 2022, indicating the profound value and impact of these new solutions on our supply chains. Innovation is not a trend. It is a dramatic and meaningful industry-wide shift. Here's just one example. Back in the day, if you wanted to ship a domestic load, you'd need to hit the phones. You'd call up a few brokers who would then call up their carriers, find the best rate within their small network, and then they'd call you back with a quote. That game of phone tag could take hours and ultimately the pricing would only reflect a tiny piece of the market. Now, with load boards like DAT, it's easy to post loads, intake quotes, and compare pricing based on historical data. The collected volume and pricing data can even be used for forecasting to anticipate trends while creating a more unified pricing standard across the board. But all of that innovation, all the technology has historically stopped at the border. And I'm sure you've wondered why. Why don't we see the same level of investment, the same level of transparency once the supply chain crosses the North American border? Let's take a step back and look at a standard US domestic shipment. Looking at this diagram, it's clear how simple it is to ship a truckload domestically. You have a pickup facility, a single carrier, and a destination. There's usually a bill of lading in the mix, maybe a confirmation email or two, but it's really very simple and ripe for innovation. In fact, some domestic freight tech startups have already automated the process and can price, book, and tender these simple loads with minimal human interaction. Compare that to a standard U.S.-Mexico cross-border shipment, and it's pretty clear why technology adoption has been so slow. While you still have a pickup facility and delivery, the middle is where it gets complicated. For one thing, you're going to be dealing with at least two, sometimes three carriers. Because the U.S. and Mexico have different laws and regulations, most trucking companies in the U.S. do not service Mexico or Canada. You'll also need two customs brokers, one on the U.S. side and one on the Mexico side. Each comes with a stack of paperwork in English and Spanish, respectively, and that paperwork needs to be properly completed and passed off between drivers, usually at a transload facility at the border, which you'll need if you can't find a carrier willing to cross their trailers. If any of the paperwork is wrong or misfiled, that's going to result in a delay and very, very potentially expensive delay. Delays aren't uncommon since the entire process is usually handled via dozens of calls, emails, and faxes. Just getting a quote can take hours, and if you don't speak Spanish, you can't really shop around for Mexican carriers. There's no standardized pricing, there aren't any load boards aside from ours, more on that later, and overall it is complicated and a very analog mess. All the complexity of cross-border shipping directly translates into more time and more money. There are multiple parties, anywhere from eight to 10, across multiple countries, each with their own languages, laws, and cultures. And because there is no transparency in the process, 
it's common for data to be siloed across each party or for providers and shippers to rely on the tribal knowledge of a few industry veterans who know a guy who knows a guy who maybe remembers how much it should cost to ship a truckload from Monterey to Michigan. If you're relying on a traditional broker or a forwarder, you basically have to take their word for it when it comes to price and service. This is why introducing technology into cross-border shipping is so critical for modern supply chains. For one, technology allows for better insight and control. Because reporting is happening in real time, tech-enabled supply chains are more flexible and resilient. When COVID-19 caused unanticipated manufacturing delays and later port congestion, shippers who had GPS tracking were able to determine where their freight was and how long it would take to resume standard operations. Meanwhile, shippers without tracking were left in the lurch, forced to track down their freight manually. Being able to instantly know about and respond to a crisis or even a run of the mill delay is crucial to keep the supply chain from breaking down. Technology is also more sustainable. The conversation surrounding sustainability has rightfully gotten louder. Technology allows for a higher level of efficiency and route optimization than analog planning. With a dense, highly visible network, it's easier to find and fill empty trucks. This is especially important because according to the EPA, nearly 72 million metric tons of CO2 emissions come from empty miles alone every single year. Finally, technology standardizes rates and service. Collecting data on transit times, pricing, and demand provides a benchmark for shippers and carriers to use for everything from pricing to market forecasting. Technology is so, so powerful. We've all seen what it's done for domestic shipping and it's poised to do the same for cross-border freight. But why now? Sure, traditional providers might be costly and inefficient, but freight is still moving between the US, Mexico, and Canada every single day. Clearly it works. Not as well as it could, but it works, which is true for now. In a few years, it may be a very different story. Most of you have probably heard of offshoring before. Offshoring is the process of relocating a business unit, production or services, to a different country. In the U.S., this typically means moving manufacturing from the U.S. to China. There are a lot of reasons a company might choose to offshore, but it comes with its pros and cons. It could be cheaper and easier to manufacture goods in China, but it could also be far more expensive and time-consuming to ship those goods out of China. Onshoring is sort of the opposite. It's the process of sourcing or relocating a business's production operations within domestic national borders. This would be like an automotive company in Los Angeles having a plant in Detroit. This also comes with pros and cons. It might be more expensive to pay American workers, but far cheaper to move the finished product. Nearshoring, on the other hand, is somewhere in between. It's the process of moving production from geographically distant countries to nearer shores. For US companies, that usually means moving some or all of their manufacturing from China to Mexico. Nearshoring can be the best of both worlds. It can result in goods that are both cheaper to produce and cheaper to ship. Because of that best of both worlds angle, nearshoring is on the rise. COVID-19 and the logistical nightmare it created during our global reliance on China is one of the many reasons nearshoring has surged over the past decade. On a policy level, the USMCA, which incentivized North American manufacturing, especially in the automotive sector, and Biden's executive order, which calls for more domestic production and closer cooperation with our allies, have legislatively reinforced the importance of North American trade. On a more practical level, nearshoring makes sense for many businesses. Transit times from China to the US range from 20 days to six weeks, while running a load from say Monterey up to Detroit could take as few as four days. With careful planning, that kind of lead time can be managed. But when there's a global pandemic or let's say a freighter stuck in the Suez Canal, it's way more difficult for the supply chain to recover. We saw this domino effect most profoundly with COVID-19 where containers languished in the port of LA for months at a time. Managing production is also easier when plants are operating within the same time zone and only a few short flights away. Finally, transportation is cheaper when you near shore, much cheaper. And while we've seen considerable strides in green technology for trucks, usually in the form of electric tractors and greener fuel sources, ocean freight continues to raise eyebrows over sulfur emissions. Nearshoring makes sense for so many companies that more of them are moving from China to Mexico every month, and Mexican production has climbed dramatically in the past decade. Demand for capacity has increased so significantly that we're seeing major acquisitions, like the Canadian Pacific Railroad's acquisition of Kansas City Southern, in preparation for a crunch. Without preparation, 
all that growth will strain capacity, increase cost, and increase cross-border complexity for shippers worldwide. How can a shipper avoid that capacity crunch and build a better, more tech-enabled cross-border supply chain? It starts with building a freight ecosystem. Traditional point A to point B providers cannot address the needs of a modern cross-border supply chain. They have the breadth, they offer dozens of services, but they lack the kind of depth and focus that you really need to address the unique challenges a border introduces into a supply chain. If you don't understand what's broken, you can't possibly begin to fix it. That's why cultivating an ecosystem of purpose-built technology and providers is so important. We need specialists, not generalists, and we need a way to connect all those specialists to encourage the data sharing and transparency necessary to achieve higher levels of innovation across the board. Collaboration is ultimately the key to better cross-border supply chains, which begs the question, how do we facilitate the collaboration? The answer is collaborative marketplaces. As consumers, we've all interacted with collaborative marketplaces where a buyer and a seller quickly and easily connect to transact. Expedia, Grubhub, eBay, we all use and rely on marketplaces we go about our daily lives. That said, I think the best way to explain the virtues of a collaborative marketplace is with an example the used car salesman. No offense to any used car salesman who might be watching. The used car salesman operates with a traditional middleman model. His main goal is to make money. He doesn't want you to know what he paid for the car he's selling, so he's not going to tell you. Because he makes all of his money in the margin, he buys the cheapest cars he can find, no questions asked. In fact, he won't even tell you where he bought the car in the first place, and you can only choose from the cars currently in his very small lot. Now compare this to Kavak a Mexican used car marketplace. They don't make their money on individual transactions, they make their money by increasing the number of users. So service quality and a high referral rate are core to their business. Prices are clearly listed, and since you're buying directly from the seller, you know where your car is coming from. The marketplace is carefully managed with a vetting system while also allowing for wider selection and control. Here at Forager, we took the technology, the connectivity, and the marketplace model and created a new solution. Scout is a collaborative integrated marketplace that connects all those parties involved in a cross-border shipment into a single platform. It provides a source of truth and replaces the dozens of disparate phone calls and emails that used to be necessary to coordinate a shipment. It's built and powered by industry experts who have a deep understanding of cross-border logistics and can proactively troubleshoot common problems and errors. Scout gives you the control and transparency that you want with the 24-7 tracking and instant pricing that you need. And all of this innovation, including our own solution, ultimately builds towards a more collaborative, more transparent model that benefits everyone involved. Here's how it works. Using our platform provides superior cross-border service, the kind of service that makes shippers wanna give us more of their volume. More volume pulls more carriers into the network who see all the additional opportunities and appreciate working with experts who aren't taking advantage of them. More carriers drive more competitive pricing for shippers who in turn increase their volume and provide even more opportunities for those carriers, which leads to more volume, which leads to more carriers, and so on and so forth. The ultimate goal of innovation is to make our lives easier, and I believe that is how we do it. Thank you all for your time and attention. If you're interested in collaborating with us and introducing more technology to your cross-border supply chain, you can reach out via phone, email, or on our website at foragerscs.com. You can connect with me directly on LinkedIn. Clearly, I love talking about cross-border freight, so feel free to DM me. Thank you.